Right, so we don't need to theorize, we don't need to stipulate, we're going straight into it. It's the lockdown throwdown, day two, semi-final playoff stages, single elimination. Ooh, Van uh, Valorant versus Super Book World, aka Seven. And going into this mid, we're watching Senor John, or we should probably call him Kado, as, as fans like to call him. And I'm not really seeing too much kickoff right now, they're just kind of setting up their preliminary sticky, seeing if they can fish out some good damage, and the first damage has been fishing out for Kado, but uh, they can't really find a way in, it seems, poor little uh, Super Book World. They try and throw a couple of soldiers in, but the scouts have got their numbers, and they're now on the back foot, having to deal with all these aggressive scouts, poking them, prodding them from this corner, and they're feeling a little trapped, but the scouts are surprisingly holding the ground, but some players over on the Super Book World want to back out, and not everyone's catching the memo here. Tiger being one of them. Yeah, nice bit one here. Not a huge one with Pandora. Weak, but alive at the end of this one. So, Blue Team will get out of this just fine. Super Buck World hanging on to the second point for now. Not much of any momentum for Valorant going on just yet that they can use to get into the second point. We have a little bit of a stalemate, and obviously, you weren't here for that match last round that Valorant played, but <laughs> they are used to waiting. There was a lot of waiting mm. for the game and in the game as well. <laughs> so, the patience is already. A skill that they have shown, but just patience alone does not break up this hole that Seven historically should be really strong on. They like Granary quite a bit, and it all just comes down to who will be the playmakers, you know. Yeah, speaking of playmaking, we've actually picked, already picked up a conch early on in the game. You usually start fishing for these sort of out-of-the-box tactics as the game gets a little bit more underway, but they've got a game plan here, it looks like, over on Balance. They're already picking up that conch, trying to build a little bit of it now, but they... We'll probably be keeping tabs on it all if they're sly, Super Book World will notice. Now it's just a spam to get that thing going, first of all. And no one quite daring too much yet. So it all comes down to who wants to make the first move here eventually, as they're just trying to set up shop in this garage area on Valorant's side of things. And Super Book World just being happy to let them have it as long as it's not much more than that. So just a little bit of mild spam, Starkey watching from right, Celentis from the left, the whole combo just playing safe, back of the little shack there, just not be so oh, many bombs, and nice. yes, one trap nice. for all the takes sometimes. Yeah, vi nice trap to catch an overextending Sorex there, so it is a pick, but it is also Granary. It's going to be hard to really capitalize off that pick. The only person I can see gain a little advantage or a chance is the roaming soldier for Super Book World, and that would be Starkey, and see if he has some clever jumps that he's picked up since his... Uh, jump map escapades for about, what, six months now? I don't think yeah, he's even going to attempt it. Oh. Yeah, nothing, nothing much just yet. Uh, Super Buck World with one big, like you said. Not too happy to just dare too much there into the stalemate down to the midpoint. Like you said, not really an all too easy point to contest with everyone just having a lot of good high ground position on the hold on mid on Valorant. So it is back into this normal stalemate from mid to yard. And all of them just slowly trying to spam from garage, maybe rotating here and there. But it is the stage of the tournament where, like you said, with single elimination as well, you, you have to approach things carefully. Mm. And speaking of careful, you have to be careful because this conch takes such a long time to build. Azuna is plowing through all the ammo, hoovering up all. Uh, the packs on the map and slowly but surely building his way. He's now got the 100% conch, but what's the play here? What do people like to break it down with? Oh my god, Amarok got absolutely deleted from the video game there, trying to do a fancy jump in, maybe create some space for his team just to get paddle spanked by a scout and then created. It's a cruel life for a rumor. Yeah, Stark just looks at the midpoint, doesn't like what he's seeing as well. Slant is gone, takes a oh. chance instead, comes straight into the middle of the point there. Only has time for one good rocket though, and it would take two of those to get the medic. So seeds will hang on to life there, just fine. Picks are being traded back and forth, but is anyone actually going to dare much of this? They're coming forward in garage now, trying to take a bit more space, maybe threatening a push a little bit more than before, but at some point you will have to actually make a final move here. And so far, they're not willing to take the risk just yet, with just the one pick also spawning just now as well. Yeah, so we do have the conch available, but I guess they're debating how, how they're going to break this down. Do they uber in first and then conch in after? Do they conch in first and then uber in after? Or do they not try and exchange any ubers, just go for a plain old conch play or vice versa? It's a lot of uh, opportunities or ways you can take this conch or who knows, they might even just bank it and just wait on for the next push. Yeah, for now they're not taking much of a risk. I mentioned before, they're used to waiting here. They spent a lot of time on Sunshine last, early today, 
and we're pretty content with that, so Granary Bit isn't much different from that for them right now. I see Mamrock still taking the chances every once in a while, but Superbug were showing themselves as a very confident thing here, not letting these ones happen. Seven won a lot of things for a good reason. Poor Amarok. He is trying his best and getting these fancy jumps to get some momentum and speed, but he's not even getting uh, Permzilla in his sight lines or on his screen, let alone under his crosshair. So it's going to be difficult for the man. It's going to be a long marathon, but like you said, they were quite the marathon runner. And eventually, something's got to give if uh, they keep throwing in Amarok. Or at some point, they start making a different approach here. Oftentimes, you see people trying to rush the flank there. Super Buck World 7. No matter what you call them, should be prepared for these kind of things, but if you just find them unaware for a second there, the one click on the flank could lead to a lot of space being taken here. And that is oftentimes a very valuable option to go for. Nothing much of that being there just yet, just trying to get these bombs in, maybe some early damage on the soldiers. They got slanted weak a lot of the time, but they never get the final shot of them there on the crate. I mean, he's not feeling too weak. He's got a bit of that battalion's backup buff. He's uh, brought down low enough to actually get the orb uber forced out of uh, Permzilla. Wants to save his compadre, and I can see why. He's got a battalion's backup being built up. 60% right now, but uh, it's on the Zunas and Co. to see what they do with this conch play. They've uh, conched in, and they're just doing an excellent job of kiting it so far over on Sub Super Book World. No casualties, no mere damage is really going down. Azunas is really trying to connect some of these rockets and gain some ground. And they are doing it slowly. They have given up the yard area, but they can re-push this quite easily over on Super Book World if they just take their fights right. And they will be taking it. There's a lot of damage. Cadus finds it enough damage for him to make the big boy bomb in. And he does get the big boy double kill. Nice counter pipe coming out of Amin's. Nice counter pipe coming out from Eames there, trying to pick up the pieces of this disastrous push. Eames putting the team on his back and carrying them to victory. Permzilla overextended. Seed's getting in on the action as well, and Permzilla's going to have to kill himself or no. Eames is going to do that as well. Fantastic showmanship of Demo Man by that British man. By both of them, really. We talked about them being the brain to operation. That doesn't mean they don't have the technical skill as well here. Both of them stepping up the task. Cadiz Bomb just falling a little bit too short to actually kill everything there. Still got two kills, but even with the counterplay gets it and turns it back around in his team's favor there. But the exchange just barely wasn't good enough. They had a lot of space off of it, but not the kills. And Super Buck with a really nice post war fight there almost makes it to mid with that one, but not long enough. In the end, they will fall short here in the end. There's now an opportunity to push him to last with four Valorants. Oh, they've popped in double stickies, but there's a sentry gun to meet him. He actually picked it out of the sky, and uh, now it's up to uh, the remaining of the Super to solidify this point. But they come crashing down in synchronization over on Super Book World, and they will somewhat make this a good fight for them. But they're losing their players one by one, and it seems even old gods can die. They will lose the first round on this Granary map. Yeah, Valorant setting the score here, 1-0 in their favor, really nice round there of just uh, a close lost fight onto second into just making up for it by pure willpower on mid to a really nice push that I think even just immediately took down the gun there and getting rid of that thing as quickly as possible is just so important for this kind of last push. Taking it down late can have majorly bad consequences, you won't get point time whatsoever for example. Yeah, another mid, another demo exchange, and nobody really winning out at the start of this map. It's all going to come down to what the soldiers can play, and we've got a nice triple bomb coming in, but it was just a mere distraction. Super Trunk World will go down for Salentes as uh, the soldiers have uh, supposedly done their jobs. They've taken out seeds, and now they just need to keep P Permzilla alive. That's the next operation, and they don't even have to try too hard at that. They're busy looking for the kills, it seems, and the greatest defense is a good offense coming out from Seven. Yeah, it works out this time around, and not just working, but working brilliantly, so getting the medical, keeping Perm safe in the midst of all of this, this could be a huge momentum swing that they need right now, not just to not have to deal with the deficit on a map like Granary that can be just so slow and tedious to make a comeback on. A lot of the work skipped quickly with a good mid fight, means they get mid, they get second, and might just have a shot at last already. It's a difficult last point to deal with on just Uber ad alone, so there's still a lot more work to be done here, but... Let's see how hard Valorant is making it for them with the off-classes they have here. Yeah, it's time for the checklist. Get the sentry gun up, get those stickies on uh, the point, and get your heavy weapons guy with the correct weapon. 
and the actually the correct weapon looks like he's picking up the sniper rifle instead they've ubered in but there's not much uh, player sorts can make unless he switches off class now they're focusing the demo man over on super buff world but they haven't quite taken them out that will be the job of the scout who actually uh, peppers him down but they're losing more players than they're actually gaining here on super buff world nice little uh, exchange of the pipe it will be an mge draw over on that pipe area and there's still a lot of valorant players still breathing and they will start breathing towards that point yeah, and with Seeds not even having peace in all of this, they just have so much momentum now. Spawns are slowly coming up for both sides. Amrock dying late and this exchange to Stark will mean he has the worst spawn out of all these players right now. So it's only five on a push right now, but that might be good enough if the threat of Diva and a bit of defense play against these players looking for a force is gonna work out now. They're taking their time here, they want to play it safe. Seven can't get much better for defense than they have right now, so they're taking their time for this one. Probably the right decision still needs to work though, and actually they are fairly quickly. Looks like Super Buck was all the way out of there already, so everyone will get the point, but Seven will get the advantage now. Very, very overzealous pop there. I guess they were really uh, timid or worried about any sort of stra uh, traps or soldier play. So now they will cap off this point, but they're going to have to deal with an uber charge eventually coming out from Permzilla. But he's not going to have it for a little bit now. They can take the good old one, uh, 1v1 skirmishes and whatnot, but they're not going to take that. They're actually just going to back out completely. Respect the name of Senors as they will just give it up. We do have Neville behind, but they also only have four people actually on second right now, so Super Buck would have worth the numbers, just wants to take the space here quickly, and with the Uber in straight away, not going to waste much more time than that, but not going to catch much at all, it gets to the point, oh. much like the mid-fight before, it's not going to be, be much more than this. Valorant still have to get out of this one with the five up front and one behind, they have here. Yeah, they are very... I guess a uh, calm play coming out from Super Book World. They Ubered in and they could have kind of chased that a bit more than they wanted to, but they decided against it. Decided to just be content with it. They went for the back cap play instead. They will deal with those play pesky little players going for the back cap. But, oh, Tiger's left uh, throwing himself at the uh, point as well. Will be quickly cleaned up by these scouts. It seems everyone's on point on this server so far. Yeah, both teams playing really well, but Valorant's. Coming out of last year pretty quickly, not having to use the same situation as before, no. Uber for Superbuck to speak of just yet, and with no one quite being ready for the push just yet either, they can't really fight for midpoint at all. So Valorant's get this one just fine, and makes up for what went wrong last time. Didn't have to use this time around, and will just take the midpoint. Valorant's now in an Uber stalemate, but all the way on mid. A lot of ground covered here, a lot more lag to go though with the stalemate that they struggled with before already. Yeah, it really was a journey of a thousand miles. Most of the time it would be a journey of just a hundred miles for some, but uh, they decide to make it difficult for themselves over on Valorant. I think once Cadus feels down, they're feeling pretty confident in taking these doorways without taking these Ubers. So the next plan is probably to see if they can kind of weasel their way into the yard area, just like they did before. Maybe another banner perhaps? It worked so well last time. Let's see for now, just a bit of damage exchange here, maybe another bomb. Amarok is trying to get in, can't find the opening though, in the midst of all the people blocking the doorway. And that's about all that's really gonna happen here again. Valorant can take a time, and even more so than before now, having the lead. The, the ball is in seventh quarter here, they need to make the move sooner or later to get into the match again. Oh, how poetic would it be if they just kept them under control, kept them under the thumb like this all game. They've actually forced off the Uber Amarok while we were busy uh, looking at the picnic on mid. They just got in there and got the force out of Paul Perm. So now they have to really pick up the pieces here on Superbook World. But how do they do that? Did they let them push in? Did they get aggressive themselves? Did they just go for some tree cheesy uh, stick trap? Let's see what uh, old man Cadus has picked up in his time and thinks uh, is the best course of action. Well, for now it's Starkey oh, no, trying Starkey. to... Oh, uh, no, uh, Starkey. Team Starkey has been spotted, spotted. yep. <laughs> the scout just saw, saw him in the sky is. Somewhat low, but uh, nobody really bridging the gap quick enough. But that's a nice little spot. Uh, it's a sh just, uh, just a shame, you know, you can see him, him floating in midair. I think an even better play would have not just been just to blatantly call it, shoot it, but just pretend you didn't see it, call it though, and then just wrap around with like somebody and just take him down quickly before he can do anything and get mm. a free pick into this second point here. But it's still a safer play to just like get rid of it immediately and if he knows he can't get anything, clearly he will just leave. So but taking the safe way out for now doesn't mean it's the fancy one, but sometimes, especially in a lead like this, why take more risks than you need to? Let him oh, do no, Speaking absolute, of risks. Absolute disaster. I guess they were going for a double soldier bomb over on the flank and uh, 
because of that disaster known as now. They're nowhere to be seen in this yard area. They have completely vanished from this earth and they will take their freebies here on Superbook World, but they've got to worry about all these players that are going to get into these doorways for free and there's a lot of work on Eames' shoulder. He's actually going to uh, pull his shoulders off the high ground and kind of take the fights with his scouts there and during the little like, foray they've actually managed to force off an Uber and get some picks to boot. They do lose Eames however so they've got some reinforcements going to be coming in soon because of that forward resupply and they've got some nice bombs coming out from Amarok and coordination between this Valorant team. They just need to keep Seeds alive and Seeds will keep him self alive it seems with his nice little footwork yeah really nice fight before he was even came out they got these players down already so Valorant's just picking their targets really really well there before Pramzilla can chase and uh, uh, save anyone meaning they already had such a bad position in this exchange as well and all the space they got off of two players down was blatantly used by Admiral to just wrap around and kill the medic nice drop sure. there they have to chat they want to take the entry to last early doesn't work quite yet trying to get here into last straight away so they Take another breather, get this Uber up and running, gives Super Park World a little bit more time to set up a defense gear. The heavy gets buffed up, the gun is getting built as quickly as possible. What can this last all do? And Eames is in. He has to focus not only the sentry gun, but this heavy weapons guy as well. He's uh, taking a lot of brunt of attention. Captain will go down and the soldiers will trade their life. And it's not looking too great for Valorant here. They haven't got everybody quite in the fight. Eames is really in the fight though. And he's brought enough space for his scouts to work off things a little bit. And it's really going to come down to the heavy lifting of these scouts. And my god, are they lifting here, Dum Tum. Yeah, the scouts went easy. The ammo came in later to fight. I think he needed ammo and just took his time coming from second. But he came in just in time to help the scouts get the damage done here. And Eames with a huge bomb on the medic there means everyone just has to go in for Super Buckwood as well. They can't play slow anymore if the medic is down. So sometimes going for the medic on last will work out just fine. It just comes down to if you choose your options wisely. And they certainly did this time around. So getting greatly rewarded for a 2-0 lead now. Uh, Eames doing a fantastic job as well, Good, barreling down, really trusting his uh, his damage that he'll put out, getting into the thick of the fights and throwing him in the space. Let's see if he can keep up this good work on the second mid. And he's pressuring Cadus a lot. They've spotted or isolated what they think is the problem, but they traded a lot for that Cadus pick. And I'm not sure if it's too worth it. Three down just to get the poor man Cado and. They're going to back off. They're going to keep Seeds alive, like in good Valorant fashion, but Starkey's on the hunt, and he's uh, hunting on basically a jump map. Everything's a jump map to him, and this boy loves jumps map. Yeah, he does indeed. Well, Captain as well. I, they're just like half a jumper team at this point, oh, really. And let's go in. He's going for it. Go. Gets in for the bomb. Nobody's quite got... Uh, well, actually, he's just a bit short of the, uh, the jump, I'm afraid. He couldn't quite get on top of... Uh, seeds there but he didn't have too many shots putting him out to the end i think it was possible well, unlike a jump server you don't have infinite consequence free attempts on this one sure if you hold in seconds good it's like relatively consequence free but you still give veterans the option of sacking a player in as well while you're still one down as well so at some point it's going to become a, at least a little bit risky here but on last it's tough for veterans to make a good play out of last right now so they're just being careful about not being surprised for off classes certainly spike check there for a little bit probably should be aware of the starkey off class right now sooner or later on this last one as well you would expect it it's not the greatest sniper sideline for free anyway you have obviously the option for someone to open shutter and you just sit all the way back and have the nice sideline but it's not the biggest sideline to sit back. Sometimes you will have to commit to the shutter door for the better angles onto last. So let's see how they approach this. For now, it's just Darky up top, seeing if someone commits onto the pipe into the doorway here. Yeah, he's going the uncon unconventional top, and it's going to be hard. There's a lot of ways to spot him out early before he'll ever get a sideline onto a medic. So we'll see if uh, Starkey is maybe not bombing for the medic. Oh my god! Poor Senor John, not Senor John. Cadus goes down, so that's a massive pick for... Uh, Valorants, they're definitely going to try and size up an idea or a push or a plan. I mean, Sorix is probably not going to be part of that plan because snipers it's really difficult to push out with. But do they need to take the risk right now? They're 2 0 up, but most, yeah, they have Venus in trying to oh, get a pick here. Get is, the tiger. Oh, close. Fight, Very close, however. It was in his jungle, but uh, doesn't really find the easy kill. And it's a shame because you don't get too many picks like that onto Cadus. There was like a small moment where Tiger was weak and didn't take the pack, and that's like some just minor things on high level Ooh, that I appreciate. Nice. Ooh. Fastest finger first, and it will be Starkey with that fastest finger. He's going to get taken out by this trap, however. There we go. Eames uh, with the uh, outplay. Oh, 
more like just the outsmart with the stickies ahead of time and he now has to switch sides keep control of this left hand side flank now that he's dealt with the sniper they've even brought the sentry gun up forward to kind of create this sort of second base vibe and allow them to kind of hold these doors a bit more closely but maybe it plays a bit into the hands of Cadus. he's po poking around and trying to give some three easy stickies and the tiger's going to give away his life during that all right, yeah, I was about to say before the plays happened here with the sniper, there was a short moment where someone was weak, a scout, I think it was Tiger, and he could have taken the pack on second, but uh, minor things like this matter a lot, where if a bomb happens after you take the pick as a scout there and your medic doesn't have it, that is such an opportunity that you just ruin for your medic to just play safe with the heals there. So it, it might not look like much, and it really isn't all that much, but it could just about matter that one time here. Trying to get the sniper side, I know, established a little bit deeper into last, Scout opening and a lot of pressure from the other side as well. So Seven just trying to make this look like it's Gully Wash here, but they're getting punished for it. Even gets one, so it's just number one. The sniper as well. Ooh. Will die as well. It's three for two. It's still better numbers for the side of Valorant, but it's not all that pretty either. It's a boiling pot here. They're getting pressured by uh, all different manner of sides, and Cadus will get caught out there waiting for an arrow. And Permzella not as sharp as he used to be with that crossbow. And it, oh, Eames, nice little pipes to take out that uh, that one last little guy keeping him away from that second point but during that time everyone's come back from uh, the world of the dead and they will start booking it for that second point defending it again and i'm a little worried about this position actually that you can see earlier where between those two sides they feel a lot of pressure and especially eames he feels like he has to look at one trap on one side and spam pipes on the other he's actually got traps on both right now and he has to look a bit at top as well this man feels like he has to do every job yeah seven was notoriously good at putting up his push on Let's do this! Let's do this! Oh, now he's up the stab, but he does get the backstab onto Permzilla. They did not see that coming. And usually there's not many teams that will give you that aerospace, but believe it or not, Superbook World will be the one that won't. So now it's going to be really tough here for Superbook World to kind of deal with this oncoming push. They get an uber charge for free, basically, if they choose to take it, and they're trying to take it slow instead. They want to get greedy with it and try and uh, maybe hold it for mid instead and play off the uh, the heels alone, and the soldiers have the top area on lockdown, and those two scouts that could back cap taken care of, so they're going to get that second point pretty much for free as well, and yeah, let's see if they can keep going with this. They've got that uber charge still. Yeah, so we has got a 3k last match against the Frenchies on last, but none of them was the medic, and suddenly one med kill later, that's sometimes all you need to make the spy play worth it in the end. But last time it was enough to win the round, this time it gets them out of last year, maybe not quite a round win, but given the fact that there's so little time left for a two round comeback for seven, for Super Buck World here, it is gonna be a tough task at hand now for the guys in blue to manage to come back from this, so Valorant's in prime position to just get more and more time on the clock. He said they didn't want to use this Uber into second. It worked out just fine. Now it's even harder for Super Buckwell to get this yard position back, let alone back into second. And they have to do things very quickly now. It seems like Valorant are getting tested on every stage of the map. And they're coming up, uh, you know, passing with flying colors so far. They've managed to successfully deter a last push and they've managed to successfully yin push out from a last stalemate they're making these yard works push they seem just the overall better team right now compared to these two yeah so far so good but there's a little bit more time left to go here a little bit of spam into garage keeping people in check trying to go for something here can they keep the bomb in check though doesn't want to commit too much Zaki tries to find his way out of there but no it's not allowed exit in the end one and uh, the end here so Bomb not going through and a little bit more of that and might be enough here. They need to bring this down pretty much though to complete the end of the, the timer here with only a two on lead. Yeah, Azunas is going to get a nice healthy ball. Uh, he might maybe humor the idea of trying to make a bomb here. Starkey has been uh, come back as a sniper instead, but it will take him a little bit of time to get back to the front line and... There we go, he's back now. So we'll see the all eyes are on Starkey, it seems. He's the one that has to kind of make the stalemate break, and they're feeling the nice cushiony cushion of this five minutes. Oh my god! Face deleted off the, uh, well, off the face of that man. And Eames going down, that's not only your demo man down, that's your team coordinator. He's have, He has to uh, just book his entire team back, give up the ground, and fortunately they're playing Granary, though. They won't lose a point, they'll just lose a bit of map control. 
Yeah, they have this little bit of safety net here, but they really, really want to have to come down to that. They don't want to give up all this space here onto second, but it's a hard fight to take here when the damage is still looking pretty good for Super Buckworld. They're trying their darndest to stay in control of this point. And so far, Super Buckworld is caving in. They do have the sniper watching the point, though, so the moment someone tries to get any more space, Stark can just press one button and end anyone's life here. They dare just a little bit too much still, maybe trying to bait people forward from Xenon's watching yet, though. So Valorant's just fairly nice and secure on the point right now. We'll use oh. our point, they want them out of here. Yeah, they've actually popped off the Uber. They uh taking their chances on taking these fights instead. And uh, Cadus, he's tried to get out an escape plan. And oh my god, the escape plan is to actually have the pan go all according to pan. He just Ubers, uh, Ubers up top. He will have another soldier uh, gone and deal with him. As soon as he's even going to pick up his backup of uh, Cadus as well. He's, he's hungry here on this, uh, this Frenchman. And he wants to find more picks, but can't quite find them, it seems. Now that was really quick cleanup there. As soon as the Nevo didn't play for years together to not have coordination like that to just get these kills quickly. So it works out just fine. We'll keep Super Buckworld in check for the time being. Stark is still on Sniper and the pressure last time was really good. Uh, they will have Uber just a little bit sooner here, but how much will that matter when they would maybe just crumble? Last time they didn't, but it was a close Ooh. call already with is, almost everyone dying. Is top for three. Azunis is in. He's got some good spam on the enemy oh, team. Uh, 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 one down, two down, maybe even three. They called them in a pincer maneuver here. Captain is trying to just find any sort of kill to turn this uh, a disadvantage into less of a disadvantage. And Salentes and Starkey are just kind of scratching their heads like, what went off on that flank team? Yeah, they just did not see that one coming. Everyone was busy trying to put on the pressure from one side, but no one was watching anything else. Stark still has a sideline here. It's not all a done deal for the second point yet, but how much are they willing to risk taking more space right now? They have this big head. They're not going to go through the sideline that Stark wants them to take here. They take the long way around. They have the time for it, and it will work out just fine. So they will get out of second into yard, take that bit more, uh, that bit more space here that Super Bug World will have to cover in order to make the comeback happen, but... It's gonna be tough right now. They have to set as well. First of all, the plane needs to have to break this super at disadvantage. Yeah, it's gonna be a hard uh, job. I mean, sniping on Granary is hard in general. They've actually decided to, again to take the Uber in early against this sniper and see if they can just focus him down instead. It's taken them a long time to actually find that kill and it gives a little bit of space for Super Bookworld to maybe get some good turnaround kills themselves and some good damage, some good follow up between all these players here and Valorant's are going to have to dig deep and oh no they've actually can't finish off what players they did damage during that entire fight they're gonna have to give up second here all right two minutes and 30 seconds left uh -oh. here this needs to be around quickly Neville is sniping as the last line of defense as they won't have much more spawn Ooh, but Neville he hits got the it. shot he got him he got him the hero the hero shot and Cadus is busy trying to cut off the doors and maybe they can just play things off from that point on he tries to rotate round and catch them uh, where he least suspects them uh, but Cadus is plucked out of the sky Neva, what a man what a machine we go down still though but is it enough they have two minutes to get any round of the board on the board, let alone two in a row here. So this kill might be nice in theory, but in practice, I don't know if it's good enough. They don't have a chance but to try here, but it has to be instant for them into the second point. Capped up already, which wastes already a little bit of time at least. Super Buck World hard pressed to find a push into last now. Yeah, they have trying to pressure the point from an arm's distance, but they it leaves themselves a bit overextended. That makes it easy peasy for Liz, uh, Lasagna, for the uh, Salentes. <laughs> to uh, get the kill onto uh, Azunis there. They've thrown another soldier. It seems like it's not going to work this time around. And with two soldiers down and just heavy weapons guy, too busy dealing with a scout on his plate, he's going to get trumped by Cadus and they haven't got enough players for this point. It's actually going to be around for Super Book World and there's one minute left. I'm not sure if it's possible, but if there's any team to make it on the comeback, it's probably a team full of these players right here. They were able to stop them for about two of the three minutes we've spent on this last point here. One minute left to go. It's gonna be a tough one, but there needs to be an explosive start to this or else there won't be a good end for Super Buckwood, like you said. I wonder, so we'll I wonder if they're even gonna turn up for mid. No, they're not. There you go. They wanna turn up. They wanna get this map win in the bag and they can guarantee it by just not turning up to mid. And it's got to feel a little bit salty if you're on the side of Super Book World. Usually players... Uh... Well, Cadus gets pre-fired around the corner in choke and completely stopped on the attempt to bomb in for the team. They still don't have a choice but to try here, but taking so much damage already. Soldiers looking here, everyone's falling low. They only got a single kill out of this one and 
just intuition, knowing someone will have to make a move here by him. Free fire stroke and immediately stops this push before it even happens. Yep, the checkmate move, it's so difficult, so, so difficult uh, to be on that aggressive team where you need to get around back with such little time. Playing it safe like that will guarantee the map for Valorance as uh, not only has this got to sting a little bit for Super Bookworld as they've probably come back from pedigree. I mean, they've got excuses by all and probably don't even care too much, perhaps. But still, it's got to hurt to lose a map like that. Uh, at times that felt like the best aura I've ever seen to be honest like as soon as and never obviously you have like the flank history together but they did like really really good together uh, Amarok as the sacrificial lamp maybe might not have the best logs I'm not sure but I mean he did the job that team needed where Eames as well had a huge performance everyone did well seats didn't die much just really really clean game for them and they might have cut it close in the end but it's not just because they're playing incredibly well that Super Buck World will make it easy for them and it's it's a close win but a strong one nonetheless yeah it seems like everyone's uh, sharing in on a nice hero moment over on balance and they're just popping off and let's see if they can extend it into their second map and it is their map pick it is their map point and it possibly is their way into this grand final let's see if they can beat the old gods it is super book world versus valorance Seven, but they're basically versus or Electro. Let's see. Let's find out. It's Turbo Tabs. It's Dum Tum. It's Arc Rhythm. And already, Stark has gone down to the pressure of these scouts, keeping it under control. And already, they're out of there. They lose Starky that early. There's no point turning up to mid. At least they are aware of these things quickly, right? Some teams would try to fight out for Conan. Sometimes it's worth it, but they didn't have anyone in a good position to do so. If you already have a Soldier Deep or behind, there's a chance, but. Seven isn't the team to take chances too much as long as they know how nice, to counter play. Nice trap, nice trap coming out from Cadus there. We're going to uh, checkmate the poor uh, medic as Seeds didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming. The stream didn't see it coming. Let's see if they can see uh, this push coming as they have to now not only defend, but defend without heals. The fan were out an Uber and. Yeah, they're trying to throw in Amarok. It will pressure out Permzil a little bit, but that's all it is. Just pressure, but it will take out the Uber charge, but he still lives to make another push. Uh, speaking uh, surely, uh, solely on statistics right now, the Seeds already is on half the depth of last game, so that you know, sounds like a good start for Super Buckworld here, but Kate is getting juggled by oh, the no. the show. Doesn't look like a good start to just push into second at all. They're not doing anything with this one. They're still trying mightily, but everyone's on the way back now. Well, wisely so as well. Not contesting the second point too much anymore, and now just add back seeds. Pick a door, any door, uh, Dum Tum. We're going in because we've paid us down. That's going to make it easy for these flank players to get in. There's a choke way to get in, but you have to deal with these soldiers and their aggression. And because the soldiers and the scout play is syncing up quite nicely for Super Book World, and they're making a real good go of it. All these trades here benefit Super Book World in a small way. They still have one benefit in their back pocket. That's the scout Ubered. Sorex Ubered up and going to focus down Permzilla. They have to get out quickly from that choke area because there's no real backup for them, and they do chariot their way out, and the reinforcements actually turn up for Valorant now to defend the second point and hold on to that advantage. Yeah, really great focus fire by Super Buck World on mid, like you said, and it, it, just immediately when the Uber came out, they just killed everything that wasn't on beam here. Still, with Tomzilla dying a lot, this, this might still have been at least a wise plan B to go for for them. They didn't get the midpoint, but they didn't do seeds. They were out of mid as soon as the medic died here, so Tomzilla gone, and so it was seeds, but in a lot more favorable position now because of that 40% add out of this one. They basically had the same chance like last time. There's quite a variety of TF2 here, no too many ways about it, no stalemates or constant failed pushes, it seems like everyone's getting a chance to just do some regular drive pushes with the demo man going down or just getting a plain old advantage. Some very, very TF2 here in uh, in this process game so far. Azunas is going to get in for three, nobody's watching that doorway as much as they could and he links back up with his core team to get that pick onto Starkey and they're getting overwhelmed here over on Super Book World. Azunas might even fish for more kills as they start capping off that midpoint. That is two picks, that is just enough for them, won't have to use either. Just nice going 
for the side of Valorant just now. And a little oh bit no. Go, maybe. They don't know. Azunas is there. Azunas is on top. He forces the Uber out of uh, Permzilla. Will he get out as well? He won't, sadly. They throw in Amarok as well because they're, you know, they're kind of a combination at this point. They're uh, bounded by the soul. One dies, another has to die as well. But if they've got four players in Uber Charge, surely they can hold off uh, Salentas jumping in, and that's what they do as well. The scouts are, are getting in from the different flank ways that have been let loose, but it's all kind of rope to get, uh, hang themselves in. Uh, Eames has gone in with an Uber. They get a pick onto the last remaining soldier for uh, Super Book World, but they can't really find these scouts. They're too agile. They will get back. Sorox is manning up. They're hitting uh, Cadus where it hurts in the face, and oh no, they're overextending one by one. They really need to keep coming up trumps with more of these kills and they're hoping that if they just keep throwing in enough bodies it will justify it and my god Amarok is justifying things just barely in the still and they don't want to have to go here pipe from the back oh Kato okay, the okay, but seeds is nowhere to be found yeah and they without uh, being able to see it they can't kill it and Cadus doesn't feel good with just 32 HP going into that fight. He's uh, instead going to back off and wage war in this war room in the blue area, the blue last. And let's see if they can deal with this upcoming Uber charge that C has, you know, thankfully uh, kept alive. Yeah, they have this advantage. It's 50%. That is doable for them to last. Let's see if they will actually manage to, though. Yeah, they take out the sentry gun quick. That's the first job done by the Uber. Eames is going in in good Eames fashion, but he's actually getting a lot of damage and work done. He takes out Permzilla as well. They just need to kind of calm things down and start playing, blobbing up and taking off these players one by one. They've got no heals on their side, and the, uh, the scouts and the soldiers, they even play a bit of points as well to really draw attention to them. It looks like they're being played like the fiddle here by Valorant. Yeah, they're doing a really great job of exploiting mistakes when they can see them and make up for their own whatever they happen. So, Valorant's with the lead yet again, five minutes into the game. We've seen how much that mattered last map. They had the buffer room of two rounds. They were able to take one L on one round, and Ooh, that was good enough for the end. That's fast. That is real fast. The uh, the creator of the fast rollout, but that's a fast bombing soldier coming into it. Gators has just punched his card too early just to end up getting punched himself. And, oh, that's got to hurt. Maybe... It all of this is just to credit to Raph. He made Eames angry and angry Eames is here to win. <laughs> At this point, I'm doing a great job of that one. So that might have been the secret ingredient here all along. Yeah, oh, they actually get a pick uh, with some stickies over on that chokeway. Eames with the soldier going down. Azunas does it again and he actually gets out this time. This man is just leveling up longer and longer. This game goes on and can things get any worse for Seven and Super Book World? Oh. Yeah, Valorant just rolling along right now. Big pick on the medic here. Stark just now spawns in time for last push, but they won't have heals just for a little bit longer here as the push comes in already with the Uber on Scout and Doubleman getting the gun straight away too. Yes, uh, Starkey isolates and controlled it very early on. They don't want to ignore any kills here and there. That's what they're prioritizing, kills. And one by one they will fall. Uh, Cadus will be the last one alive and he usually is the one to kind of keep that point safe. But when there's nobody left to kind of fight the players, what is the point of keeping the point safe? Yeah, that was just clean and simple. Get the kills before the heals come in and have an easy time once they're here as well. There's just, just nothing left to save for Prinzola at that point. So that one kill on to second by Zunas was so valuable at the end here. And quick second round after uh, not too long first one either. So Valorant's with great pace into map two right now. Where's Drac when you need him? He wouldn't let these flanks go uh, just unhindered and uncontrolled like this. He would have these doorways covered, but they're going to jump in with uh, Salentes, and he does take a lot of attention off their plate, but he's just uh, throwing bodies in, and it seems like the wall of Valorant will not falter. Sorex, he's reloaded, and he's uh, locked in. He wants to get another kill onto the, the scoreboard, and instead will force him out of this mid. Yeah, this will be a mid one again. Not a huge one, but maybe just in a good enough one here in the end. Taking space in second, really deep bump it by Zoom. Tries to get what comes there, but everyone else is covering that man's life as much as they can here and not much more is being done here they are not aware that Pamzilla was not healing for a little bit there down to the mid fight so they weren't ready to push off the small ad they had these are the advantages that understandably aren't being used but unfortunately so as well it's a shame because they've won so quickly their first couple of rounds done to me it gives a lot of breathing room to uh the rest of super book world and seven because i mean that 20 minutes is a long time in fps land so you're gonna feel 
quite comfortable thinking that you can claw this back. But it. 2-0 does feel nice and cushiony, you know, you can play things, then they're playing their game now, and usually it's a game seven likes to play, but uh, they're the ones tasting their own medicine right now. Yeah, Valorant or Electro in the past have learned from the best, they played seven a lot back in the day when seven was still active online, and were like the, the keenest scrim opponents, where a lot of people just didn't really feel like just getting destroyed by seven, and it seems like they learned the right things out of those lessons. It is uh, beautiful to see. Maybe there's a uh, a tear of proudness coming down the face of Kado right now, as uh, maybe the students are surpassing the masters. But we'll see. It's still some minutes left in this game. They can still cook something up in that uh, that super book world. And right now things have calmed down uncharacteristically in this game. Yeah, a little bit of waiting time here before maybe some. Final moves are being made here, but understandably so. Valorants don't have to take the biggest risk. Single sacks is all they need here, and single sacks is all it will be. They're oh yet again, but yeah, that's the end of that one. Yeah, that was a uh, very early cold, early isolated, and early destroyed Azuna's trying to bomb in there. And I mean, he's feeling good. I would say a lot of his bombs have worked out magnificently so far, and I can sense that he's feeling himself a bit. You know, feeling confident about these bombs. Speaking of confident bombs, Starkey. Trying to jump in, but he's got a lot to deal with. Every single eye is on him, and every single pellet seems to be hitting him as well. They're going to try and make the counter push here, despite uh, Azunis is probably back in the fight now. There we go, yeah, he's back with the rest of his team. So they can think about making the push. They're trying to slow push it in, see if they can cheekily get it. Maybe check for sticky traps this time, Seeds, and uh, yeah, I think we'll all be good. Here comes the double bomb, Azunis 1, and up 2, the rockets are in, the not <gasps> quite landed. <laughs> Azunis just about safe out of this one, and that is so huge for them. Going down 3-0 off of a drop like that would have been unfortunate, if not to say anything else here. So here we go, counter attempt by Salentis, but that body blocking the rockets for the medic and keeping him alive just fine. Seems everyone's taking turns here to do these bombs. It's not just down to one particular player for either squad. They all want to give a good shot and... I mean, there was a chance then, if uh, he hit the air shot there and Permzilla wasn't quick enough on the button, he probably would have dropped his Uber because it was just that sort of closeness to it and I think there was enough damage there to at least an 80 rocket damage to take out the man's life, but who knows, who knows? We're working off a different timeline right now and that timeline is Azuna's getting bullied out of this computer room. Yeah, so we're left standing with a little bit more of a standmate here after these few sack attempts. The team taking the chance just yet, but like he said, as soon as forward in PC, everyone else just aggressive sewer. Seems to be how they like to approach these things and then have these two bombs Ooh. going on. Neville all the way behind, but spotted by Starkey. He doesn't have the head to go for much. We'll get cleaned up by Tiger really quickly. And there's even more kills. Still gets one. Cadis gets one on all different directions. They try pressure from all directions, but none of it is working. All right, this is going to be very hard for uh, Valorant now. I wouldn't be surprised if they completely give up this mid and that lo looks like what they were doing. Not even going for some cheeky soldier hiding or sticky trap play there. They just threw too many bodies in. I guess they were trying to play off the fact that uh, Nevo got himself behind and uh, it you know, it doesn't work out. We can go back to the drawing board and the drawing board is on the red second. They've actually been forced out uh, by Starkey here and uh, Speaking of taking your own medicine, they have to start wondering what they can do with this uber disadvantage now. They haven't even got enough players on their screen to attack with, so they're just going to have to go back and maybe even give them second here. Yeah, they might just have to give something free. Oh, the damage though, the soldiers are in for this one. Both will go down. Two down, four falls isn't too bad. It comes down to the defense right now and how keen Super Buckworld is to take this chance at the last, because... They won't get a better one anytime soon right now, so oh, here we go. Gun, right. Oh no, wow. Kadus goes down instantaneously. Had a couple of stickies on top of that sentry gun that they were reliant on for, uh, to work well for this last defense, losing both of those soldiers. And Valorant, it flip-flops just back as uh, quickly. Tiger, gone unnoticed during all this though. Azunis is the only soul alive. He's actually going to take the fight against Zunis instead. And with that man going down, he's actually done his job. He's uh, drawn the eye of Tiger long enough to get uh, to stop him from that last cap. 
Alright, bomb by Amarok trying to make up for the loss of the medic, but won't get through the heavy defense in time here. Super backwards figuring out you're not gonna get out of this last point if we don't let you with the heavy rolling up. We've seen them like starting doing it towards the end of the last playtime here last year already a little bit more, just busting out heavies every once in a while to just slow things down, get into better positions themselves, and don't allow the other team to play much at all. And now it's working, Saki slowly peeking to last and just denies so much area already. Yeah, he's uh, he's just chipping people down though. He's not going for the classic heavy where you get him as close and as uh, to the enemy as possible. Instead, opting to just pellet them down with constant barrage fire. They will pop in an Uber and try and uh, overwhelm this sort of doorway. Cadus uh, didn't account for the scout on his ankles though, eating him up. And Azunis has come back into the fight. And is this a pause? It is it's an interesting time to be a pause as well. They're so weak. There's no way they win. The staff just needs to look at oh, them and they die. I think, uh, I think he's got him. I think he's got him. There's nobody blocking that point. I mean, yeah, like, I mean, look at the health of everyone. Stark will just delete them immediately when he looks at them. Yeah, and I there's no not enough health. That, yeah. I think uh, that's just where the pause has probably come from. It's entered a new round, and Azunis is probably at that threshold of the point where he's knocked off it and not considering blocking it. You do see a bit of tippy-toes from Sorix there, but there's nobody alive for Valorant, so there's nobody to really back up all this play, and that heavy weapons guy just feels like a, just a checkmate waiting to happen. Alright, that is... I did track players on the server right now. It looks like no one crashed, which is a good thing, because it's really unfortunate when in the middle of a game a medic just DCs and then... Uh, with obviously this not being the time in the game where the pause happens, but a few seconds later. Uh, <laughs> there you go, there you go. You're just just not... losing your medic like in the middle of a mid-fight now, for example, which won't quite be the case. It would be like shortly after the mid-fight, basically, where the pause will happen. Losing your medic like that would be unfortunate, but doesn't look like anyone DC'd as far as I can tell, so it should just be someone's like ping probably having some issues for a little bit, and they pause for that to be fixed and then continues. So hopefully not a major pause here. Wasn't a long one, so good to assume it won't. Perhaps a tactical pause. Eames got a nice little fast rollout here. Uh, Kate is going for a slower rollout uh, through the uh, sewer area instead. And let's see how they play off this play. Amarok going in for the big boy bomb. Didn't quite find any damage or some attention as well. And uh, they're not feeling it over on Super Bookworld. They're actually going to fight this, what feels like uh, 5v4. Easy peasy for them. Starkey will go down, but he dies for the cause. A lot of space made and a lot of players down for Valorant. Yeah. Yeah, not quite landing the aggression here just yet, so Super Backworld will take this mid fight home for now, gets them a little bit closer to making the comeback happen. We've been in this position before, but with much less time on the side of seven here to make the comeback happen, so now they can just take their time for me some better place than before. Oh god, maybe that pause from earlier was a tactical pause after a quick round loss and uh, it would be awfully heartbreaking as they've tried so hard over on or Electro or Valorant, however you want to call them. They've played so well and just have it kind of slip through their fingers like this, this massive power play over a team like Seven and Super Book World. It's going to be cruel. Cool. I saw some lag, so this is where the server in fact paused. I saw American spawn for a second. Maybe he was the one having issues for a second there. So, ooh, wait, looks like Kato's net died. Starkey? So it was we've Kato's got Spy? Possible. Hello? I think we've got a, uh, a hidden uh, enemy amongst us. He's got, uh, got his way in and he's actually bumped into an engineer and all oh, that engineer saving his life, in, you know, just by the butterfly effect alone, keeping him away from his back and I think he had an opportunity there. What's a close call, but everyone was standing on top of each other and on top of the gun as well. It's gonna be hard to get a good shot at anyone there. So. And it just had to have a crap shoot onto whatever was most available and none of them had the bath turn in the time like you said. So won't be a kill just yet, picks up the sniper rifle instead. Why bother going in when you can just stand in front of them, make life hard that way, and just slowly chip away in this last point. It worked at least once in Granary. Why not try on this point as well? Hold up, what's this uh, 4D chess uh, play here? They're building entrances near the medic. Is that an easy get out of jail free card for the medic perhaps? It can certainly be, you just have to be Oh no, he's, he's gonna moving it. I am, uh, I'm just overthinking things. But uh, he's okay. playing Iron Man right now. He's inside the dispenser, the impenetrable defense, but I can't tell you how many times I've seen someone sniped uh, with their head poking out of that dispenser. So let's see if they can take down uh, Iron Man. They will have to. They will have to find a way through this defense here. The medic and the dispenser have begun up and everyone else is making... A Good job so far at least. Trying to shut down Sniper Cyclone if they're even aware of it just yet. 
Stark hasn't really taken much of a shot just yet, but sooner or later we'll have to. Shot have to come out ringing quickly, and Ooh. what actually rings out are just the U.S. Yeah, they pop first over on uh, Valorant, and they're going to take the fight backwards, trying to start the fight on the road. Turns how many times have I seen that spot? end up uh, being the bane of a medic's life and he goes down and with the heal advantage not quite the uber advantage as it isn't built up yet it's going to be hard for Valorant. they've got a sentry gun on their side but i bet they're feeling a bit betrayed by this engineer as that positioning has forced their downfall yeah this is what they needed they have this 50 percent ad right now already trying to get some damage into last year before the heals are really kicking back in but not too much coming out of it just yet. They will just take their time here. Maybe get the snipe going in the meantime. And then uh, they are ready to go once this Uber is built. This is their opportunity now. They can't afford Ooh. to fail this. The conch comes out of the Zunas as well to try to deal with this a little bit better. I mean, they would have heard the conch go off, surely. Like, as in... And he is holding down the button, so it isn't activated quite yet. It's just like a warning call, almost like a... Uh... A really angry cat that's been backed into a corner. Back off, or I will strike you with this conch, says... Uh, Azun is and they pop off the Uber despite it they've uh, actually overextended a little bit they're playing off the sniper instead that's got this free rain on this side they're trying to spam out the sentry gun with pistol fire but it's not as strong as rocket fire Sorex manning up against Ty uh, Tiger showing him the 1v1 king oh 1v2 king 3v something something and he will and uh, kind of collapse on that uh, permzilla chokeway <laughs> where did Celeste's taunt go or try to at least uh, I'm guessing he went into the top bunker. I can only assume that's the only place you can get a sort of suicide kill. And why he would want a suicide kill? I mean, hopefully just... I mean, if you're there and then you know you're there, then the best bet, I guess, is to just, like, try to take somebody with you. He took the extreme measures. Uh, don't do this at home, kids. And <laughs> you're back. to so add Ooh. Valorant coming into second already. Yeah, it's not going to be ad for long, though. They've popped off the Uber, trying to get position here on this second point and trying to just find any blue players, let alone... Uh, some kills so with that kind of going completely tits up they're going to have to just go back to last again probably scout out the area first yeah not a successful push at all and we're just making a good job of kiting everything gun down early as well and with add as well to super backward this is looking dire for valorant on last oh. right now ng down as well it's a trade in the end but with less of anything to deal with on the defense here right now this might be pretty nice for oh them. stark will spot amarok sneak trying to sneak his way past and when he tries to double back he will get picked out and it's an uber without a, a soldier to deal with however and they're gonna have to try and defend off this point cadis has got some of these doors on lockdown not on lockdown enough as he, some people managed to get their way into this last point and they're too busy fighting with players not really prioritizing the point it seems over on super book world and they're gonna get reinforced upon by the reinforcements and Permzilla is going to take the long respawn back. There yeah, we go. Just playing with the Uber a little bit before the kill comes in. 14 second respawn that is just keeping this full ad alive for so much longer now. Oh, he's close, close fight there but like you said the doors were not quite locked enough. I think Amarok it was just jumped straight over the stick. He's just Cadis wanted both the medic and the soldier they led one through and it just led to all this fight going haywire yeah permzilla's just spawned up now so they've still got some heals compared to the super book world team and cadis didn't even get the forward respawn as well as he would have probably hoped for so they're gonna have to give up this mid give up the ground and they've got an uber charge next to deal with now as they've dealt with a team that has heal advantage over them but how are you going to deal with a team with uber advantage over them yeah, the uh, push is truly imminent here. They're actually coming straight out of Sewer. They spent a lot of time there in the even with situations just straight out of it on advantage, trying to catch anything. Not much getting done though. Everyone from Seven just leaving quickly and not having any of that. Oh, Tiger trying to get his way on top of the point here. They're doing a good job of actually blocking it. They've camp camped it all the way and Eames is... Uh just overwhelmed and manhandled. I think uh, they're trying to make a back cap play whilst capping that second point, but Super Book World have different plans. Yeah, never on the backlines. They are aware of it though. 1v1 Tiger will win that one, and that is just go time for the rest of Super Black World coming in here onto mid already. Just not wasting any time. They know they have add, they know of players down. This is free space for the taking. There you go. I'll be feeling a bit of a squeeze of the timer though if you're Super Black World. Eight minutes left on that clock. One round. They still need to get, uh, to get to just bring it to a tie and take it to a golden cap. The Valorants, we've seen that they'll do anything they need to do if it comes down to it. So. Let's see if they can get it on the good footnote here as 
Kader's brought down so low that he has to kind of take a quick pit stop during halfway through these fights. They pop off the Uber first, but they will respond in kind over on Valorant, and they decide to just back out with it. That was uh, success enough. One scout didn't quite get the memo, though. Tiger, though, has drawn a lot of fire and a lot of uh, attention away from the rest of his team. Kader's jumps in to try and play off that sort of uh, gained attention, but... All these players playing off uh, the sort of aggro ends up getting aggroed upon themselves and the pieces are falling apart here for Super Buck World and just turns to the left. He's going to get a longer respawn again compared to all his teammates. Great defense by Aura there, just stopping every single player that was trying to approach super quickly and it just steamrolls from here. They get mid, they have space on second, a few forward spawns, but none with heals at all. They need to see Roy about spawns a little bit for some second camp, but it's just four people right now. There's not that much to worry about at the end for the second point. So this will be huge add into last for Valorant, and they will be hard to not take this opportunity. Yep, Uber charge ready, teammates ready. It's time for the go whistle. Eames has put his sticky uh, down and he's already taken out the sentry gun. He's going to do the Eames bomb straight in. Stay, lay down the foundations of the damage work. And my God, is it being uh, uh, backed up as well. The soldiers are doing a good job. Actually, Tiger managed to squeeze his way between all that damage and rockets to kind of turn these spikes. It's scouts left over on this last point. There's actually Demo Man left. And it's a hard, tall ask. And one Demo Man remains. It's King Kado and... He's going to actually start pushing out to second. Yeah, the focus fire was just a bit short. They just couldn't quite win out this fight here. And Super Buck World staying alive for a little bit longer here. Time is not uh, nice for them right now, but they will need to take the chance. They want to get to second. Ooh, damage is soldiers. Yeah, no, no, no. Huge damage there. Yeah, and he gets a couple of crossbows as well for his troubles. These soldiers clawing it back. That seemed like such a demanding second to ask for them. And Kader's even had that choke where he caught them locked down so the scouts can help him out but they do it on their own it seems yeah they will keep the second point under control for now six more minutes left to go a single round could make this all the harder for seven we've seen them be two down on the granary and they barely were able to get one round in time not quite a second one after that so uh, one round deficit isn't too bad just yet but they're still in prime position to lose another one here if they just make any mistakes right now Five minutes left, and I don't think the round timer is going to bail them out this time. It's definitely win or lose here for Super Book World. They're going to have to make the heartbreak around happen, but it's hard, it's hard to break a heart. And let's see if uh, they've got the charm here over on Super Book World, over on Seven, over on these legendary names. They're going to have to justify some of that, uh, that echo chamber there. We'll see, we'll see as Lantus is the one taking matters into his own hands right now on Spy. While the rest of the team is still busy defending. They need something to get out of here. Oh, so Spy oh, is dancing oh, around oh, everyone. Oh no, did he bump into somebody? Did anybody notice? I don't think they did. And uh, oh, he's going to come cloaked as a scout right in front of you, buddy. Probably needs to look at that field of view again. Still got it caught uh, onto that low setting perhaps. And too busy uh, and maybe just not enough invis watch to work with. So with... Senor Chunk Worker going down. What can he do? What can they do? They don't want yeah. to even jump in, it looks like. I mean, they need to take risk at some point here, but you don't want to have it be like terrible attempts either just because you're that hard pressed on time right now. You still want to choose like at least decent options right now. So it's a slow approach here right now, just walking on the slow beat, taking some damage forward and making the spy be a little bit of an easier time here for it's another attempt. Salentes thinking, what would Sideshow do? He would just go spy again, and that's what he's done. He's gone for the back-to-back -back spy. And they have... I like the game proactive here over on Super Book World, but it's really, really hard. I think maybe he's taking his time much more, uh, but Seize is a masterclass in Medic. I don't think he's going to let any uh, old spy get his back, at least not without a distraction. And I think he's calling upon his team to give him that distraction. Well, they're trying, they're throwing in some damage, no one's committing just yet though, and Salentis needs a distracted player here. Medic right oh there. no, they, they, they just, second. he just felt something going on in wrong in the world. Sorex, check that man's back uh, status, as he just felt the winds were wrong, the force was whispering to him, and the spy was behind him all along, gets the kill onto him, and I mean, if it was Sideshow, he would just do it again. Yes, he is, I like it, I like it. Just because you like it, will you like the outcome of it? 
Probably not. Twice in a row, didn't I mean, work. There's I mean, Sideshow would also fuck up this many times as well. I guess. So. I mean, he learned from the best talentus. He learned from <laughs> for a while, I suppose. Bad habits, die hard. Well, I mean, Seeds, he does nothing. I mean, I think they know. And they know how much of a meme it would be at this point. They can't let a spy backstab uh, Seeds. And Seeds is practically playing with a dance mat pad as he's just looking in every direction. <laughs> how are you supposed to get this, man? They need to get a solid distraction going. Anything. Oh god. He shoots uh, He shoots towards the wind but doesn't hit uh, Salentes this time. And I mean, all he can do, I think, is provide into us to his team. Don't think of this as like a spy class. Think of it as an intel class. Well, they need a little bit more than that. Tiger tries to keep the shutter door open at one for the sniper and they couldn't deliver the shot with that. So sniper has been called off and that's as much as they're going to do with that one. Spy do you think they still can, there. I think they can hear the footsteps as they... Oh, he actually... Oh, Seeds is kind of wondering why is that player showing incredibly keen interest in in me right now, but won't allow the face stab. Keeps his com uh, his composure controlled and doesn't flinch. Will he will go down? Trying to go deep as well, trying to be the hero for the team, but two v one on the flank will go down to Sarx and Neville, and that is that play prevented mm -hmm. as well. At this point, you could make a play with this. At most, I think they will just single sack here. Amarok is trying to peek in here, fights the engineer of all things. Will go down for it, but. They don't have to dream much bigger than this right now. They need to stall for a little bit more time here and then they can call it a day. Oh, well, Zunas is brought down low. They need to kind of retreat a little bit and get him back to health. But during all this, Seize has got too much to deal with. He will pop off his Uber, but it's a single Uber versus a very multi Uber. They lose some flanks as well. And that second point given up. But I mean, at this point, it's not a game of, uh, of numbers here for Valorant, at least not the number they care about. They just care about one big number, and that's the timer. They're going to run down this clock. A minute left. You're feeling the squeeze. You're feeling it tightening around their throat, and they're actually going to make the fouling push in. Captain walks into a sticky trap, and it's really hard here for Super Book World to kind of go into this fight, losing a player, but also playing off against a, a uber advantage towards the enemy team and some low-health players to boot. Only a single minute left to play. Small out to see it. All they need to do is manage the control of mid right now for a little bit longer. And then they can call themselves the Rifters here. This is all the pressure on Super Buckworld right now. They need to find a way in here. The bust out of last work to find enough. But this needs to be that three times over right now to win a round. Okay, this gets stuck on his jump out from the sewer door. Yeah, pre-fired and pre-shot and pre-destroyed. It's going to be really hard. I hear a punch or a battalion's backward going up. I think that is Azunis's, but they lose Eames during that as well. The Uber's good, and uh, they're doing a, a valiant job of actually cleaning up these kills here over against uh, Valorant, and they're just... Chaos reigns for these scouts and they're crawling all over them. It's a bit worrying. 20 seconds left. The soldiers making a meal out of it, but they have got that midpoint. They're going to have to get on their horses and get that second point quick. And they're going to have to send every waking soul to that last point as there's only a few seconds left but there's so many players left on there captain's going in there's only the w key but it's going to be his downfall the scout is in and it's over seven slow die and they have gone and done it they've beaten them valorance has won this best of three if you want to say your bids and thank yous i'll start you off I've been Toad Tabs. With me has been Dum Tum and Arc Rhythm has been our production. Thank you very much and we'll see you really soon on one of those streams. Twitch Prime.